good morning welcome to the next session of green building course in the last or previous session i can say we have discussed regarding the various materials or i can say the masonry units or the different materials uh, we have been using with respect to the construction aspects now in this session let me move on to the the next topic the next topic is environmental issues environmental issues concern to the environmental issues concern to the building materials environmental issues concern to the building material so this is the next topic which i am going to discuss in module number 1 so what exactly is this before uh, proceeding to this topic so here we have been discussed various building materials for example uh, we have been started with stones uh, bricks laterite blocks and so on so now what i meant to say here is what are the issues that will be related mainly environmental issues that will be related regarding the building materials so in particular i am going to talk about the material which are used in building is it clear so now when it comes to the production of building material production of building material okay so in this production of building material there will be related to environmental or health related problems health related problems is it clear so this production of building materials will lead to the environmental problem and one more thing is health related problem okay so there will be two types i can say there will be two types of this problem so let us uh, know one by one okay so firstly firstly in general i can say uh, during the production of uh, a building material it will have a impact on environment it will act impact on environment what i can say in the form of a uh, pollution in the form of pollution that means whatever the building material we are going to produce okay in turn it will uh, lead to the pollution that is a one thing <coughs> and or one more thing is it will create a problem with respect to the health hazards to the human beings so this is the first way i can say that it will create a problem in regard to the production of a uh, building material firstly it will be related to the environmental or the health hazards in connection with the human and coming to the secondly coming to the secondly so the next thing is also uh, this is not related with respect to the environmental or health related problem now the another thing is in regard to the fossil fuels fossil fuels so whatever the of uh, fossil fuels i am using in order to produce the material for example if i want to produce a bricks we know that okay we have been discussed in the last session how to produce the brick so in that we used to completely remove the soil and then we are going to make it a mold and later on we are going to burn that using a fossil fuel am i right so when you going to use this fossil fuel it will lead to another thing called a global warming how how this create the global warming because when i am going to burn the fossil fuels in order to produce the bricks in turn it will liberate or release the greenhouse gases so this greenhouse gases is responsible with respect to the global warming 
Is it clear? So this is a brief introduction I have been given. So whatever the materials or environmental issues involved in this material, I am going to talk with respect to these two perspectives. One is with respect to the environmental or health related problem, that is the first thing. And the second thing, I am going to talk with respect to the usage of fossil fuels in order to produce the bricks. In turn, it will release the greenhouse gases which is responsible for global warming. So these are the two aspects I will keep in mind, uh, we are going to keep in mind in order to explain or in order to know the environmental issues in concern with the building materials. So now let us uh, start one by one, okay, what are the issues involved in each building material with respect to environmental, with respect to the health, let us know one by one, okay. So I will start with the first material, the first material is stones, first material is stones, okay. Hope you know that the uh, stone is abundantly used uh, uh, building material. It is one of the, uh, pri it will give a prime importance with respect to the uh, construction of any structure I can say. For example, if you want to construct a building, if you want to construct a bridges, dams, roads, anything, the stones are the prime material that will be required in order to go ahead with the construction aspects. Okay, now hope you know that I have been told the stones uh, will be uh, produced. Let us uh, recap that. Okay, I hope the, I think in the first uh, session I have been explained that the stones are going to be uh, procured or produced from quarrying process. That is extraction of stones using quarrying process from the rock. Okay, will be the production of stones concept. Is it clear? So now these stones uh, are now uh, we'll come to the perspective of building because anyway the course is with respect to the buildings. I will not talk uh, uh, about the infrastructure that is roads, bridges and dams. We'll talk more with respect to the building perspective, okay. So now coming to the building perspective, if I talk uh, about the stones, the stones are abundantly used in uh, various things. For example, it will be used in substructure as a foundation element. Okay, for example, hope you know that in the buildings, uh, they are going to use it as a size stone masonry, SSM. So for that, the stone is required. Am I right? Likewise, if I go to the superstructure, you are going to pour the concrete, everything. So in that concrete also, the stones are required in the form of coarse aggregate and in the form of fine aggregates. Is it clear? So hence, this stone is a material or a building material, it will occupy its volume abundantly. Now the question comes with respect to the production, okay. Now usually uh, in the quarrying process, in the quarrying process, hope you know that, okay, uh, that while product producing the stones from the rock, it is what the quarrying process, okay, so there when they are going to blast, I think I have been told in the session also, the first session, that is they are going to use a detonators, okay, by detonators, putting a detonators in the quarry, okay, they are going to blast the bigger rocks into the smaller stones. So during this process, after breaking this, they are going to make the, these stones into proper size and shape. For example, if I want to use the stones as a size stone masonry, SSM, to a proper size or proper shape, I want to chisel it, okay, to the pro adjust all those things. So in order to make it to a proper size and shape. So for that, the workers, what they are going to do, they are going to work from morning to night or evening, maybe night also, in the, that depends upon the uh, time management or the time aspects in the construction. Okay, they are going to chisel it, the stones, or they are going to break down the stones, okay, the continuously they will be involved in this process. So during this, okay, the process of preparing the stones, they are going to inhale this fine dust, okay, they are going to inhale this because you know that while blasting or while doing or breaking down the 
stones into a proper sizes and shape, it will release a fine dust. So those fine dust will be inhaled by workers. So those fine dust will be inhaled by workers. Okay, by inhaling this fine dust, the workers will lead to a problem called tuberculosis. Or I can say silicosis. So this is the problem okay, that is going to happen to the workers, one who works in the quarry. So this problem will arise, that is tuberculosis, which is a dangerous disease, hope you know that. Okay, that will be okay coming to the human beings. Okay, so this problem, but when it comes to the perspective of, uh, this is regarding the problem of uh, workers. Now, if I come with respect to the perspective of uh, uh, that quarry owner, he don't have any concern, he don't have any concern regarding this tuberculosis or silicosis to the uh, workers. He have an aim or aspect or perspective that my job is to be completed. Okay, he doesn't have in mind that, okay, this worker has got tuberculosis and all. Did you get my point? Okay, so while producing this building material, so this is the problem they are going to face. Okay, that is the worker are going to face the problem of tuberculosis or silicosis by inhaling those fine dust. Okay, so now, sir, okay, fine, sir, you have been told the problem, everything. Sir, what is the remedy then? How can we uh, control? See, we cannot stop using the stones. We cannot stop because the stone is a prime material which is giving abundant strength in the building or any structure. We cannot stop it. But we can take a remedy. We can take a remedy so that we can take care or take a precaution. Okay. That is prevention is better than a cure. That is we need to take a prevention or precaution so that we can minimize or we can avoid these types of diseases. How? We are going to give the face mask. We can give a face mask to the workers so that they can avoid this type of problem. Is it clear? So by wearing those face masks, okay, by working that, okay, I think hope you observe that the workers also, they used to wear the gloves and all during the concrete process, during the stone, okay, while lifting the stones or fine aggregate. Why? Because uh, that will be hard enough so that they can may get scratches and all. That is the prevention method. So like that, here also, I need to make it to wear a face mask by each. That is a keen concern as a quarrying owner. Okay, I need to give a keen concern to the workers. Did you get my point? Okay, so I need to make them to wear a face mask so that I can avoid the problem of tuberculosis. This is the only remedy. We cannot stop, we cannot stop or avoid using the stone because the stone is an abundant material we need to use in order to go ahead with the construction process. So this is the issue involved. And this is with respect to the health related problem. And now if I want to talk in terms of environmental related problem, you are completely depleting the natural resources. Completely. Uh, till now, uh, no alternative have been there. But uh, uh, in our uh, uh, premises or in our college, uh, uh, we are working with more amount of uh, uh, this uh, recycling materials. More amount of research. That is what the next topic uh, which I am going to discuss after this topic. Okay, instead of, uh, uh, you know that the stones are also used as a coarse aggregates in the concrete and fine aggregates in the concrete. Uh, we are doing uh, abundant research in our college uh, with respect to the recycled materials in order to produce the uh, various green products. This is the way we can uh, mitigate or okay, preserve the natural resources okay, by avoiding the depletion of natural resources. Is it clear? So we can make that uh, recycle. That means various uh, CND waste are available. Okay, try to recycle that and use it as a coarse aggregate and fine. It will have a lot of barriers. We need to overcome that barriers and we need to reuse it. So that is what the principle we need to follow with respect to the environmental concern. With respect to the environmental concern. And this is with respect to the human or, okay, the human health hazard concern. So this is regarding the stones which I wanted to discuss. So this is the first building material. So we will move on to the next building material. 
The next building material is bricks. Bricks. So now, uh, bricks means I am going to talk majorly as clay bricks, not any other uh, bricks because in general the common terminology in the outside they are going to say it as bricks means both concrete block, clay bricks, everything they will say. But I will bifurcate that concrete blocks as separate and clay bricks as separate. Okay, now I am going to talk only with respect to the clay bricks. Okay, so now uh, this also I have been taught in the session, okay, in the previous session or in the first or second session that how exactly the bricks will be produced, okay, and what are the sizes and what are the properties and what are the test. But here also during the production of bricks, there will be lot of environmental issues are there, lot of environmental issues are there. What are those environmental issues? Now, in order to make these okay, bricks, as I stated, the soil is required, soil is required. Okay, now what I am going to do here is, I am going to remove the top soil, that means from the earth, I am going to excavate the top soil in order to make the clay bricks. That, fine, that's fantastic. What is the thing is there in the top soil? The top soil contains rich amount of nutrients which are essential for trees or for the crops, which are very much essential for the crops or trees. If you remove the top soil which contains abundant nutrients, so that will arm to the trees or I can say for the growing of crops. Okay, so this is what we are doing. In order to fulfill our need, we are removing the top soil, we are removing the top soil which contains abundant nutrients which are essential for the trees. Did you get my point? So this is one thing. And another thing what we are doing is, haphazardly we are excavating, excavating the soil in such a way that that land will become unused. So creating a okay, non-uniform pits. Okay, you are going to do the excavation here, next you are going to do the excavation there. So random excavation. If you go ahead with a random excavation, that land will become unused. Anything, it may be for agriculture purpose or anything. Okay, so that will lead to the another problem. Did you get my point? One thing, I have removed the topsoil and another thing, I have not been excavated in a proper manner. Hapazoidly or randomly I have been excavated that creates a hapazoid pits. So that that particular land will not be usable land for agriculture or for any other thing. So this is the way it will create a problem with respect to the environment. Did you get my point? So now uh, another thing, coming to the another thing. So during the production of bricks also, hope you know that, okay, in the pug mill they are going to mix it and later on in the offman kiln, okay, they are going to put, uh, put these bricks and later on on the bottom they are going to put the fossil fuels. This is the another problem. See. As I stated, the fossil fuels are abundantly required for the bricks. Why? Because in order to attain sufficient strength in the brick, the fossil fuels are required. So now, if you keep on using this fossil fuel, that is coal or whatever the things, once again it will lead to the another problem, that is liberation of greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. So this is another problem with respect to the bricks. One thing is, Removing the top soil, okay, which has got abundant nutrients, that is the one problem. And the second problem, in order to make a bricks, we need to burn that brick, okay. So if you want to burn that bricks, in order to attain the strength, we require abundant fossil fuels. We require abundant fossil fuels. So if you're going to burn that, burn that fossil fuels, automatically it will release the greenhouse gases, which is responsible for global warming in with respect to the release of greenhouse gases. Did you get my point? Okay, so these are all the problem that will be created with respect to the bricks. Now, sir, okay sir, fine, we have came to know about the problem. So what is the remedy for this sir? What is the remedy for this? How can we prevent or can we avoid using the bricks? 
Yes, one thing we can avoid, that topic I am going to discuss in the next, that is called, uh, nowadays we are coming with a recycling bricks, or recycled bricks. That means, uh, uh, without going with anything like a soil, whatever the waste that is available, okay, powder it in the proper manner, and later on, okay, mix it in a proper quantity, and then put it, and then no need of burning, no need of burning. Nowadays, uh, we are adding so many additives also to that uh, soil. So that is what I have been discussed, stabilized mud block. The stabilized mud block is the best alternative to the brick, where you can go ahead. Where you are going to add a cement as an additive material in order to initiate strength. There I have been told, no need of anything like burning. Just drying on the sun is enough. It will attain the strength. But here, we need to make a proper size and shape. We need to burn it to a sufficient number of days, maybe one or two days in order to, if it is overburned, it is not useful. Did you get my point? Okay, so these are all the problems involved. So the best alternative is recycling the bricks or using the SMB block. That is one thing. Even though if you want to use clay brick only, then what can I suggest is you keep this topsoil as it is. You keep the topsoil as it is. That means preserve the nutrients as it is uh, without uh, uh, damaging anything. And Whatever the soil that is available on the bottom, whatever the soil that is available on the bottom, below the top soil, try to take out that soil and use that soil for a production of bricks. That is the one remedy I can go ahead. Preserve the top soil, okay, and go ahead with excavation below the top soil and then go for the manufacturing of clay bricks. Is it clear? That is the one thing. And another thing, in South India, uh, we can uh, follow this principle. It is a very good principle we can follow. Uh, that is, the more amount of tanks are available in South India. Maybe around thousands of tanks are available in India. That is South India, southern part of India. Okay. So, in this, whatever the particles that is on the water that will get settled down at the bottom, that is called silt. That particles will be settled down as a silt below the water. So, after drying, you can take out that silt for the manufacturing of these bricks. So that is the one thing we can go ahead. Because so the silt, below the silt we can get a clay material. We hope you know that uh, anything which is below points, that is 0 0.075 mm or 75 micron is silt and anything below 2 microns or 0 0.002 millimeter will be clay. So once you get the silt, you can process to the clay material and you can use it. So that is the way you can go ahead. Okay. You, you got a more number of irrigation tanks in southern part of India where you can collect these silt particles because nowadays you know that uh, uh, silt is a major problem in the irrigation tanks. Okay, that is that problem will also be solved because uh, if silt is going to deposit on the irrigation tanks, it will reduce the, okay, the quantity of storage. So that problem we can avoid in this thing. Okay, by removal of silt from the irrigation tanks, we can make use of that silt and for the preparation of a clay bricks. Is it clear? So this is uh, regarding with respect to the clay bricks. Next is, the next material is marble. Or I can say marble uh, dust also. Okay. Marble or marble dust. See, hope you know that the marble is a material which is abundantly used in a, or used as a flooring material. Hope you know that. Marble is a material that will be abundantly used as a flooring material. I, I think uh, the Rajasthan is a major uh, state which manufactures the marble for flooring purpose. Am I right? So now, uh, what I can say, during the cutting process, now coming to the things, so usually know that uh, for usage of flooring, they are going to cut the marbles. So now, when you go in to cut the marbles, okay, what you are going to do here is, in the if I take 100% marble, okay, in that if I am going to cut it to a in order to make it a proper size, because uh, hope you know that we need to make it a proper because it will be in a apsoid manner or a random manner or a zigzag manner. We need to make it to a proper size and shape. In order to make it to a proper size and shape, what we are going to do here is, we need to cut that marble. We need to 
cut that marble. If you want to cut that marble, then it will liberate more amount of marble dust. Marble dust. Did you get my point? So this marble dust, what I can say, if I take 100%, almost I can say 25% of the original volume will be, okay, will be the marble dust that will be generated. 25%, that means in 75% will be usable material and 25% what I can say is a dust. So this is the way I can, uh, uh, what I can say, uh, create this or produce this uh, marble dust. Did you get my point? Next, uh, whatever this marble dust that will be liberated from the uh, industries, what it, it, what it will create the problem here is, here when it going to stick on the, for example, I am going to do this, all this process in a factory, okay, that will be a fine dust, okay, it will be gone out of the, uh, gone out of the, the atmosphere as a smaller uh, density material, so it will stick on the, the barren land or I can say agricultural land. If this marble dust is going to stick on the agricultural land, then this agricultural land will become unuseful. Okay, we cannot do anything. So that is the drawback of this marble dust. It will make the land as a barren land. That means it will not make that land as a productive land for agriculture. So this marble dust, once it is going to get stick to the, the land, automatically that agricultural land will be destroyed. So this is the problem that is happening in the Rajasthan. So now, uh, what I can say, uh, what is the amount of dust that is generating? I can say 7 million ton. This is the uh, survey done in the previous. I don't know, maybe it has been increased little more now. 7 million tons of sludge, marble sludge or waste that will be generated from the marble industry in Rajasthan. This is the uh, survey they have been done, okay, long back. 7 million tons, you just imagine. If this tons of waste that is generated and going to sit on the agricultural land, so that agricultural land will be completely destroyed. So now, uh, sir, what can we do for this? Can we stop using the marble? No, we cannot because the people want a luxurious thing. They want a luxurious flooring and all. We cannot stop this. Okay. But what we can do here is, we can avoid or collect those fine dust and use those fine dust or marble dust in other way. How? For example, those fine dust or marble dust, collect it in a proper way and then uh, like what I can say, just like fly ash collection. How the fly ash they are going to collect? Okay, that is electrostatic precipitator. Okay, how they are going to collect? In that way, we need to collect, we need to make a provision we need to come up with a bylaw in such a way that we should not liberate any industrial waste to the environment. We need to prevent this. So how can we avoid this? We need to make a provision in such a way that where we can collect those marble dust, okay, and then that marble dust we can use in another way. How? That I am going to explain now. So that marble dust, we can use it as an additive or replacement to the cement. That we can go ahead. Because this marble is, what I can say, rich in calcium. It is a rich in calcium, just like a cement. Okay, it has got a very good uh, rich amount of calcium. Maybe I can say 40, 45%. In cement, it will be 60 to 65%. But in uh, coming to the marble dust, I can say get, okay, a good amount of calcium will be there. I can go it as an additive or I can say replacement to the cement. So that I can avoid the problem in the cement also. I can avoid the problem in the cement also, okay. And uh, that means it got a very good uh, source of calcium carbonate. It has got a very good source of calcium carbonate. And also we can make a products from the dust. That is, we can make a, a stabilized blocks, we can make a concrete blocks, okay. So like this, uh, we can create waste to wealth. That means whatever the waste that is generated, create something uh, uh, useful to the environment. Okay, so that you can avoid environmental related problems also. And also, uh, the one more problem that will arise, what I stated in stones, the same thing here also, because it is a fine dust. 
okay that will be uh, whoever that ca problem got uh, regarding the uh, breathing problem the, the, the people are those people are going to suffer with this marble dust problem so all these problems we can avoid okay so this is regarding the marble now coming to the next one the next topic is or next material sorry mangalore tile mangalore tile so now coming to the mangalore tile this is also one of the clay material this is also one of the clay material so here what is going to happen i think this uh, first thing i will come to the history so this mangalore tile as the name itself indicates this tile is abundantly manufactured in mangalore region okay so this is abundantly manufactured in mangalore region okay hence and the another thing uh, uh, this has been started from uh, what i can say 1860 onwards okay very long back and uh, coming to this mangalore tile it is a very good uh, roofing material okay very good roofing material uh, even today that are existing in many villages even today it is a very good roofing material okay the application of mangalore tile will be on roofing it is a very good roofing tile where we can go ahead okay uh, now coming to the production process now during the production process hope you know that the soil will be collected okay and then once again the same thing if you destroy the top soil the nutrients will be lost so the top soil will be collected and later on what you are going to do for that for that what you are going to do make it to a proper shape and size and shape and then we are going to put it in the machine mold press it okay and then prepare or make it to a burn it to a proper uh, thing because it is also clay material we need to go ahead with the burning just like a clay bricks we need to burn it and then we need to go ahead with the application uh, that means we need to cut it to a proper size and shape and later on we need to use it okay and uh, what i can say what is the problem uh, regarding this here is when you want to burn this once again the same thing deforestation we need to uh, depend upon the or uh, whatever i can say timber or whatever the coal or whatever the thing okay we need to depend upon the fossil fuels we need to cut down the trees we need to wood. that is what the process in the previous that is happening okay okay so this is the problem and on another thing by burning it will liberate the uh, greenhouse gases that is another problem so how can we mitigate this or uh, one thing uh, we can reduce here is we can go with some alternative material same thing recycled material instead of using the uh, na natural soil we can go with a recycled abundant uh, uh, cnd waste are available that is construction and demolition waste are available uh, try to use that uh, product cut down into a proper size and shape or break down into a proper size and shape and make it the product and nowadays uh, uh, people are going with the concrete roof tile also nowadays instead of that concrete roof tile they are making a manufacturing micro concrete roof tile so that we can avoid in that concrete also try to minimize the cement content that is another problem cement is another uh, material building material which is creating a lot of environmental or health hazard problem okay did you get my point so we can mitigate that okay by using this okay micro concrete roof tile or concrete roof tile all those things okay so this is uh, regarding with respect to the mangalore tile now coming to the the very prime material timber timber okay so now uh, coming to the timber uh, hope you know that the timber is a one of the prime material that will occupy in the building for example when you want to make your building looks better good you want a good quality timber for example your window frame window shutters okay your uh, puja doors your kitchen doors bathroom doors main doors for everything the timber is required am i right okay nowadays here and there some people are going with uh, for bathroom they will go with something like a polymer doors and all that is another thing but majoritively when you want a luxuriousness okay the people expect the luxuriousness so will they go with the this timber doors so what i can say a uh, small uh, thing a uh, small survey have been done almost i can say that 10% of your total construction cost 
in a building will occupy by the timber itself. The 10% of the total construction cost will be occupied by a timber itself or timber alone. Did you get my point? Okay, for example, if you want to give a good interior, the people go with a timber. Did you get my point? Okay, so I think uh, we got a good quality timber also. So when you want to go ahead with a good uh, timber, okay, so you people would need to export from other countries like Malaysia. Nowadays, the Malaysian teak uh, or Burma teak is very uh, famous, okay, teaks we are using as a timber. Did you get my point? So, uh, in India, there is a very shortage in supply. Hence, we are going to import from these Malaysia, Burma, or Australia, so and so. Why? Because uh, we are going with uh, so many deforestations. Did you get my point? Because of this more amount of deforestation in our country, we are expecting or importing the products from the other. Automatically, the cost will be more. When you are going to import something from the other countries, the cost will be increased. Did you get my point? Next. Uh, recently, the CPWD also has made a provision that is Central Public Work Department uh, has come up with a bylaw that we should not go ahead with timber more. Okay, so that means uh, they have made a bylaw try to use uh, or avoid this or ban the usage of timber. So that is the uh, provision they have been made in the CPWD. And a uh, lot of attempts, okay. I, can, I will discuss the problems first, later on I will go. So, we need to go with a more amount of deforestation in order to fulfill our needs. Okay. So now, sir, then what are the remedies, sir? What are the remedies that are available so that I can avoid this deforestation or I can avoid this timber? The remedies are the one thing... Uh, Nowadays, the people are going with this ferro cement. So, this is a very, very good product. Okay. I think the, this topic I am going to discuss in the thing. Okay. Next. So, this ferro cement is a product where we are going to put a thin diameter wire inside the mortar and we are going to cast that product. That is called ferro cement product. Iron inside the cement or iron inside the mortar. That is what ferro cement. So, this is a very thin section we can make it in order to make it for a wardrobes, for a tables, teapot, anything. Okay, so we can go ahead with this ferro cement. Instead of using these timbers, we can go ahead with this ferro cement uh, products. That is one thing. And uh, one more thing is uh, we can go ahead with this uh, eco friendly concrete wardrobes, eco friendly concrete wardrobes, because why I am specifying wardrobes more? Uh, because wardrobes is the major space where I am going to use or accommodate more amount of timber. Okay, did you get my point? So in that case, we can go with And also nowadays, uh, the people are going with the frame of concrete door frame. Concrete frame. Okay, concrete uh, door frame, concrete window frame, ferro cement window frame. So like that we can go ahead. We can avoid this timber. So, wherever it is necessary, okay, we can go ahead with the timber or we can go with the wooden doors or wooden windows. Try to minimize wherever it is possible so that you can, okay, prevent these type of deforestation problem, okay. That is one thing. And another thing we can go ahead with is, the very good thing is bamboo. So, bamboo is a one more... Uh, a good material or I can say alternative material to the timber, we can go ahead. Okay. So, this uh, bamboo, we can make it to grow abundantly. Okay. And uh, we can go ahead with uh, these types of things. And another remedy is, we can go ahead with a plantation type. So, instead of, uh, we need to modify our plantation in such a way that we need to go ahead with a monoculture way. That means, uh, in a small space, Okay, our small area or big area, we need to cultivate the trees in such a way that the, okay, it can grow abundantly in the big area. That is what monoculture way. Instead of waiting for a number of years, if we think of growing the trees, okay, in this way we can think of. And another thing, we need to keep a space where that space is 
purely preserved for growing the trees so that you can cut down after number of years, maybe 10 or 20 years and you can use it for, okay, the uh, door or window purpose. That is the space we can create. Instead of doing a deforestation in a, a very good environment, create a space or a land in such a way that you can go ahead with these type of monocultural type of plantation and we can grow or allow that, uh, okay, plants or trees to go for a number of years and later on you can cut down that and you can use it. This is another way. Did you get my point? So like this, we can avoid, we can avoid this deforestation problem because you know that the tree is a very good, where tree is a very good material which absorb carbon dioxide so that we are living very happily. It will not liberate, it is, okay, vice versa because these, we human wants oxygen, we liberate carbon dioxide. The trees will consume carbon dioxide and will liberate oxygen. So if you want a good oxygen, then we need to preserve our mother earth by growing the number of plants or trees. Did you get my point? So nowadays more amount of deforestation has happened now. Because of this only, all this global warming, we are not getting, okay, the proper rain, okay, in the proper number of days. For example, June, July, August, we are not getting any rain. Why? Because, because of this deforestation. Okay, so we, what I trying to want to say here is, so please preserve the mother earth properly. Okay, that is what sustainable concept or sustainability we need to think of. Okay, so this is regarding the timber. So this, this is what the thing uh, regarding. So one more thing I want to discuss here is cement. Cement is the one more building material abundantly used. I hope you know that... Uh, I have been told in the first session also. The cement is the most consumable material next to the water by a man. That is the amount we are consuming. So now, what is the issues involved in this cement? The issues involved in this here is, we require limestone to get a cement. Am I right? We require a limestone to get a cement. So when you go into burn a limestone to a proper temperature, to a particular temperature, maybe 1500 or 1600 degree, if you go into burn the limestone, then only we are going to get a, what I can say, uh, this uh, cement. Did you get my point? So now, coming to the burning issues. So now, if you want to burn this limestone, this limestone will liberate greenhouse gases, mainly carbon dioxide to the environment. Okay, if I want to quantify this, the 1 kg of production of cement will liberate 1 kg of carbon dioxide. That means equal amount of carbon dioxide will be liberated, whatever we produce the cement. So this is what the drawback we need to think of. And the requirement of fossil fuels, that is another thing. So, how to prevent this? Can we stop using the cement? No. We cannot because it's a very good binding material must we should go ahead with the construction aspects. How we can mitigate this? Uh, nowadays, uh, okay, nowadays no, it is pretty okay from the past uh, uh, 10 or 20 years they have been started with these practices. Sustainability practice is going with a green product. That means try to replace this cement with a industrial waste such as fly ash, GGBS. That is fly ash means that is a waste generated in the thermal power plant. We can replace it. On and average, we can say that about 25 to 30 percent, uh, they have been replacing in the cement bag. That is what PPC, Portland Puzzlona. The Puzzlona is fly ash. Did you get my point? Okay, without Puzzlona, it is called OPC. And another thing, GGBS. So this is the ground granulated blast furnace slang. This is another material we are going to get from the steel industries. Did you get my point? So it is one more... Uh, industry that is producing a good amount of uh, slag material where we can go ahead. Is it clear? Okay. So by replacing these material, we can try to, for example, if I want to quantify like this, see, you are producing 1 kg of cement. Am I right? So it is liberating 1 kg of carbon dioxide. So that 1 kg of cement in that, try to replace this waste so that you can avoid burning of this limestone. For example, uh, 700 grams or I can say, yeah, 700 grams of uh, okay, limestone you burn in and remaining 300 grams you go with this uh, industrial waste so that you can prevent some amount of uh, burning and also the liberation of carbon dioxide. This is the way and nowadays uh, 
if the cement industries are coming with a lot of revolution, lot of innovation, they are coming with a lot of carbon capturing technologies. So this is the most happening uh, thing that is in the cement industries now. Because this is the uh, very much essential because nowadays all the uh, industry bylaws have came that especially in the cement industry they have come up with a bylaw that they need to produce the sustainable product. So when you want to produce sustainable product or a green product or eco-friendly product, they need to come up with this bylaw. That means they need to prevent the release of carbon dioxide. That's what nowadays they are coming with these carbon capturing technologies. Did you get my point? So this is the way I can, okay, go ahead with this environmental cement that is issues in one the building. So this is the way I can prevent or problem involved in the various okay building material like this other building materials also there have been discussed the prime materials is it clear so like this uh, we can avoid or what are the issues involved we came to know did you get my point so this is about this topic so now we'll move on to the next topic the very interesting thing topic is recycling recycling of building materials recycling of building materials so this is the next topic uh, which I want to discuss so we'll uh, start with the uh, number of materials so first we'll start with first material that is bricks so now the stone doesn't need any recycling hope you know that the stone is a natural material we know no need to go for any recycling okay we can go with the alternative to the stone but stone doesn't need any recycling okay fine now the first material is bricks how to go ahead with the bricks so i have been explained uh, how to produce the bricks i have been explained what are the environmental issues involved now i came to the Final thing it is how to recycle so that I can friend uh, uh, produce a eco-friendly bricks. Eco-friendly bricks. Okay. So now hope you know that the brick industry will produce uh, the bricks in such a way that it will produce over burnt brick bat also. That is over burnt bricks also. Sorry. That means where the burning process is going to happen for a longer time so that whatever the brick that will be produced that will become unusable that means it will not attain any sufficient it will become a black color so the, usually they are going to call in the technical way it as brick batch so that brick batch you can break down okay and you can reuse that instead of instead of going with a fresh top soil or clay soil we can make use of that because it is a waste product those brick batch Okay, break down into proper sizes and once again put it in the pug mill. Okay, that is primary crusher. Okay, all those things. Okay, put it and then crush it to a proper thing or proper sizes and then reuse that. So that is the one way we can do it. And another way uh, that is uh, nowadays you hope you know that good amount of construction and demolition waste are producing. That is called C and D waste. Okay, abundant CS, CND waste, especially in India, we are not giving any keen concern to the CND waste. Sim simply this because in the first class also I told that lot of urbanization is happening. Because of lot of urbanization happening, lot of construction is happening. Because of this lot of construction is happening, that is the equal amount of generation of waste is also there. Where it is going, all those CND waste are simply dumping it as landfill. It is creating one or another way, environmental related problem, health related problems and also it is okay destroying the beauty of that land and also it, that land becomes unusable. Okay, hope you know that in the outskirts of your city, maybe observe that whatever the waste 
okay, or demolish the building. Nowadays, uh, the people are going with the new technology, with the new construction material, okay, because maybe 60 years or 70 years or 80 years building is there, so they want to demolish that, they want to construct one more floor, that building is not possible, will not take care that of load. At that circumstances, they are going to completely demolish that. Where is that waste is going? That waste is going, as dumping as a landfill in the outskirts of the city. That is completely destroying the beauty of the city and also that space is occupied like this they are doing. So why can't we reuse that? Think of that. So those masonry waste, okay, whatever that is, that is called rubble. Okay, those masonry waste, try to reuse that. Try to reuse that. How? Take out that, okay, that rub rubble. Okay, break down into a sizes preferred sizes just we want to manufacture the bricks and then put it in the mill okay and then mix it and make it to a proper size and shape of a bricks and nowadays we are going with the recycling of a bricks in such a way that no need of burning also I have been told this no need of burning also simply mix it okay then cure it for a sufficient number of days and use it so we can avoid this fossil fuel avoid this burning all these problems can be avoided because the clay bricks a natural clay bricks demands burning. Without burning, no strength. But here, by recycling, we can avoid n number of problems. So like this, we can go ahead with a okay, recycling process. And nowadays, in uh, all the way we are going with this recycling technology, that is, uh, uh, whatever the concrete blocks we are producing, that is also we can go ahead with the recycling bricks. And nowadays, the people are going with the plastic bricks. Plastic bricks. Okay, the people are coming with the plastic bricks, concrete bricks, so that we can produce eco-friendly bricks. And one more thing, uh, if you use a natural cement or produce a natural concrete block or a bricks, what is the thing is, it will also liberate the carbon dioxide. Please keep that in mind. Did you get my point? So if you want to avoid this problem, we can go ahead with the recycling technologies. So if you want to recycle this waste generated from the sea, that is the buildings or any structures, dams, bridges, anything. We can avoid these types of problems. So that is what the recycling technology, we can go with the bricks. Nowadays, a lot of research is happening. Another thing, carbon dioxide, carbon sequestration blocks. Whatever the carbon dioxide that we liberated, try to capture that, okay, that means we can make the blocks. So that is one more thing, the research that is happening. So lot of innovations are happening in this. Okay, uh, for example, stabilized mud block. The stabilized mud block is a beautiful innovation done in IASC, in the Institute of Science. Okay, what they have been done? They have been taken the soil and they have been put some additives on that, that is cement or fly ash. Okay, and then they have been cured for 21, of, 21 number of days without any burning. So they avoid the fossil fuels. So this is the way we can think of. Even we can avoid the usage of natural soil also by using the CND waste. So like this, if you're going to think of, we can go ahead with the brick manufacturing technology. Did you get my point? So like this, uh, we can go ahead and all these things we can go ahead with application wise, we can use wherever the bricks are used. No need of bothering. Sir, can we use it as a masonry unit? Yes, you can. Wherever you are using a clay bricks, there you can go ahead with the masonry units. Did you get my point? So all these things we can make use, okay, of by doing the recycling process. So that's why uh, the, in the recycling, uh, we follow the, the principle called recycle, okay, then reuse, and then reduce. So this is the 3R principle we are following. That means, what I want to explain here is reduce the reduce the generation of waste in the structure, mainly building. Try to reduce the waste generation in the building. If the waste are generated, recycle that, recycle that waste, okay, and make it to a useful thing. That is called reusing. That is what the technology I need to follow. 3R. 3R principle. Reduce, recycle, reuse. Try to, okay, reduce. One, one second it is same. It is a closed loop or a life cycle. That is whatever the reuse you have been done. Once again, 
try to reduce the generation of waste. If generated, then recycle it. Again, reuse. So this is the way. And nowadays, the people are coming with uh, another uh, technology and I am also working on it. That is called regenerate. Regenerate. That is what 4R principle now. Regenerate means whatever the uh, product have been produced, okay, how many ways, that is how many number of times a one product can be recycled. That is the one research you can go ahead. How many number of times you can go ahead with a, for example, if you produce a recycled bricks, you have used it. Once again, demolish it, use it. So how many number of times we can recycle and we can reuse that product. So that is what I can do. That is called regenerate for our technology. So this is what the way we can go ahead with the recycling of bricks. The next thing is concrete. Concrete. So the concrete, once again, it is a, one of the most consumable material okay, by a man. Same thing next to the water because it contains a cement. Everything, wherever the structure you want to do, for example, substructure, superstructure, bridges, dams, flyovers, anything, the concrete is required. Okay, so it is abundantly used material. Now, coming to the problem, you okay, you already know that what is the problem in the concrete with respect to the emission of carbon dioxide. Now, how we need to go ahead with the recycling? See, lot of research is happening with respect to the concrete recycling. Lot of research. Example, in the concrete, whatever the building you have been constructed, once again, you are going to demolish and in the outskirts, you are going to throw that concrete waste as a simply as a, okay, the waste, unusable product. Did you get my point? So, that waste will be deposited as a landfill, that is one thing, and also create an environmental problem. So, try to think of that, why can't we use that concrete waste, okay, why can't we use that concrete waste as a useful product? How we can make that concrete junk or waste into coarse aggregates? We can make into coarse aggregates. Okay, we can make into fine aggregates and we can use this concrete waste as a subgrade, soil subgrade. We can improve the strength of a soil. I think that they are doing in the industry, but these they are very less. Nowadays, the more research is happening on this. Uh, my research area is this perspective. That is, I've tried to recycle the concrete waste much or CND waste much. I try to develop this product. That means I'm going to use it as a coarse aggregate. This is what I've been told while discussing the stone. See, instead of using a natural coarse aggregate, okay, we can go with the recycled aggregates. We can go with the recycled aggregates. Okay, so this recycled aggregates is a best alternative to the natural coarse aggregate where we can produce a concrete or where we can replace a natural aggregate or a fine aggregate to produce concrete. Did you get my point? So that I can preserve the natural resources, stones or rock. But now, sir, will the behavior of recycled aggregates and the natural aggregates are same? That question arises immediately. No. Slight variations are there. Slight variations are there. That's why the people are going with this processing. Lot of processing they are doing. Okay, that too they are uh, doing a research on how much energy I am putting in order to do the recycling of this waste. Whether I am putting a more energy to do the recycling or whether I am putting a more energy to do the processing. So that is what the research that is happening. So in this, Recycled aggregates, lot of recycle, lot of processing. That means removing. For example, when you go into crush the concrete or CND waste, hope you observe that that coarse aggregate is binded with a mortar. That is called adhered mortar. The mortar, the cement paste with along with a fine aggregate will be stick to the coarse aggregate. So this coarse aggregate will be binded with a adhered mortar. Now, what is the problem with this? 
this adhered mortar will create a, this is what recycled aggregates this cnd waste developed aggregates will create a problem with respect to the strength it will not give a sufficient strength it will not give a sufficient strength okay why because it contains a permeable voids and all lot of okay things are there next water absorption will be more specific gravity will be less did you get my point so strength durability all those some problems are there so if you try to process this if you try to process this in such a way that make it to a usable product what are the ways i can go with a mechanical ways of removing okay mechanical way of removing acid way of removing heating way of removing so that how much amount of adhered mortar you remove how much amount of adhered mortar you remove that is the quality of recycled aggregate you are going to get did you get my point so whatever that's adhered mortar will become the barrier for the recycled aggregates hope you understood okay so if you going to remove this barrier then i can replace this coarse aggregate i can go ahead with this recycled aggregates so i have been done the lot of research this is my research area where i have been done my research also my phd also in this area i have been produce eco friendly or sustainable products using i have been replaced up to 50% up to 50% i got a very good result did you get my point likewise you can also go with a recycled fine aggregate also now i am doing the lot of research on this area because more research has been happened on rca recycled coarse aggregate i am doing a more research on this rfa recycled fine aggregate in order to preserve this m sand also did you get my point so like this if you go ahead with these things okay we can take care of this recycling concrete problem okay we can go with the recycling of concrete i think uh, nowadays this uh, uh, maybe in the bangalore they have been set up a factory okay one rock crystal is a, a person okay or a agency they are used to produce this concrete waste they are going to break down to a proper sizes and shape and they are producing this rca rfa everything and they are selling it also and uh, latest as per research have been done that you can get a strength or durability or whatever the thing maybe not more than i can say 15% the only difference between a natural aggregate strength and a recycled aggregate strength is 15% that is the way i can say more maximum 15% i can say that depends upon the proportioning also and you are going to do the concreting also that also that will play a role okay so just 15% is the difference so like this we can go ahead with the recycling process in the concrete next we'll move on to the next the next material is steel steel is the one more material okay hope you observe that when anyone demolishes the building what is the first thing they are going to remove steel because it is a very good product where you can easily do the recycling you can very easily do the recycling okay and it is also one of the thing where you can get a money also if you going to sell it resell it the product okay that's why the what i can say wood steel all will be preserved but they will not bother about concrete and masonry waste so they are going to okay retake those wood material they are going to preserve those steel but they are not going to bother about bricks masonry waste or concrete waste so they think that it is not useful at all simply dumping into the yard did you get my point this is the way they are doing so in steel also okay in steel also uh, what i can say here is uh, okay one of the most utilized material in the world i what i can say this steel will be used in infrastructure way to the kitchen so that is the amount of steel we are consuming okay and during the steel recycling process it is a very easily recyclable material okay that means whatever the rusted or corroded steel that is available try to remove that the top surface put it again inside the furnace in the blast furnace 
and you can burn it to a proper or particular temperature and where you can reproduce the steel. The steel will not create a much problem to the environment. And wherever you see, the steel is not uh, thrown. Hope you know that because the steel has got a very good, uh, okay, a product which gets a more amount of money. Because if you're going to resell that product, okay, you will get a money. That's why concrete waste, masonry waste will be thrown, but steel and wood will not be thrown outside. Please keep this in mind. So the steel is a very good material where you can go ahead with the recycling. So that's why uh, there will be different types of uh, scraps are developed. Home scrap, okay, what I can say, industrial scrap or prompt scrap. And another thing, one more scrap is the obsolete scrap. Three scraps are developed, okay. One is home scrap, prompt scrap, obsolete scrap. Home scrap means whatever the scrap that is developed in home. So that can be easily given back to the, I think, hope you know that in your houses, they used to come up. Whatever the waste products are there, give it to me. Okay, they are going to give, give a one more new product to you. Am I right? So, this warm scrap can be easily recycled. Okay, very easily. Like that, if you go with the industrial scrap or prom scrap, there also, they are going to resell that industrial scrap to the one of the person. That is one thing. Okay, and he will go with the furnace and he will regenerate the products. And one more thing is obsolete scrap. Obsolete scrap is a, a huge scrap where a car automotive industries will develop. Okay, those automotive industries, whatever they are going to develop, that also they can easily be recycled. Uh, a very simple way I can say that all these scraps or steel is very easily recycled in a furnace and they can bring back the steel. Did you get my point? So this is regarding the steel. Okay, the steel. Next, coming to the very prime material, which is the most, okay, the damaging material or creating lot of problem to the environment is plastic. Nowadays, everywhere, everywhere, go green, go green, try to avoid plastic bottles, don't use any plastic covers. Why? Because it is not a biodegradable material. It is not a biodegradable material. That's why the people are nowadays coming with a lot of technologies. Use this much micron plastic cover only. Or use this type of material or plastic covers only. Where you can, that material will be biodegradable. So this is the way they are doing or preaching us. But even though we are abusing earth by throwing those plastic bottles and plastic covers. Am I right? So how to go ahead with this plastic recycling? So in this plastic recycling, hope you observe that, in this plastic recycling, they got a mindset that once they collect, okay, this waste, I hope you observe that in our home, or when they are going to come up with this waste, they are going to collect in a different way, wet waste and dry waste. So this plastic will come in a dry waste. So the shampoo covers, the plastic water bottles, the plastic covers, all will be treated as plastic waste. In the industries, nowadays a lot of industries have been set up in Bangalore, in and around okay, India. They are coming with a very useful product from the plastics. They are recycling it a very good way. How? They have been segregating this plastic weight depending upon the plastic content. That means the polymer involved. The plastic bottle, plastic okay, uh, covers are separate. Okay, the shampoo packet separate. Another plastic separate. Okay, so based on their polymer content, they are going to segregate the plastics. Later on, they have set up the recycling machines in such a way that they are going to, the sack pickers used to collect those plastic and even though in uh, one thing uh, I want to share here is, uh, for uh, one of the industries are doing this very innovative way. They are, if they, okay, for example, they are doing the plastic recycling in such a way that whoever the sack pickers are there, they will tell that you collect one kg of sack waste or sorry plastic waste to me, I will give a food to you. So this is the way they are doing uh, something useful to the society. The sack pickers, they are in Hungary, they will collect the plastic waste, they will give it to the industry and okay, myself being an industry owner, I will fulfill their needs by their Hungary. Did you get my point? So those whatever the sack pickers collect those plastic waste, they are going to segregate it. After segregation, they are going to do what? Those plastic waste based upon the polymer, they are going to recycle that product to a useful product. Maybe plastic bags, 
okay, or plastic bottles, again plastic shampoo bottles, recycled bottles, recycled tins, something like this. And even though as a civil engineer, I will say that we are trying with the plastic bricks also, plastic bricks also. From the, all these waste, we are making a very good plastic brick, which is very strong enough, more than a clay bricks. Did you get my point? So like this, the way, why because nowadays hope you observe that lot of microplastics are available in the inside the fishes also. Whatever we abuse into the water, whatever we throw into the, the plastics into the water that will be consumed by the fish, they will die. Okay, once you remove that, okay, they open up the fishes, you can see the microplastics. This is the latest research they have been observed. The fish used to conserve the microplastics where we can see through the naked eye. Did you get my point? If you consume that, we will lead to another problem. So whatever we give, we will receive that. That is what the things, the re, it will return. That is what karma returns. Did you get my point? So try to recycle in the best way or try to avoid the plastic. Nowadays, lot of things have been come. They have stopped using the plastics. Even though we use the plastic in terms of plastic bottles, or plastic covers, or plastic shampoo uh, covers, or in a various way, okay, we are recycling in such a way that we are producing it a useful product. As a civil engineer, we are also producing a plastic bricks. Plastic bricks. Did you get my point? And I hope you know that I want to tell you a very interesting thing here uh, when it comes to the bricks. Hope you know that the COVID-19 has hit into a, all the countries through a worldwide in such a way that it has bring down everything, the GDP, GDP, every, the human health, everything. Okay, and everyone started to wear the mask. Am I right? After wearing the mask, we try to throw that mask. Okay, one day we'll wear it and later on we'll throw it. Do you know where it is going? Do you know where it is going? Anyone thought of it? Where it is going? We have given a concern only on this. We have given keen concern only on us. Just wear a mask, protect ourselves, and later on throw it. This is what abusing the earth. So one person is from India only, what he does know, okay, he, what he does, he collected all those masks, he incinerated this, all those masks, and later on, from those incinerated mask ash, he developed the beautiful bricks. So this is what a technology we need to come up. This is what the way we need to preserve our mother earth. Whatever we give back to the society or whatever we give to the nature earth that we will receive back. If we give good thing, we will receive good thing. That's what. So this is the way, okay, we can go ahead with the recycling principles in the various materials. So by this, I can say, I can conclude that we come up with the end of module number one. So I have taken almost six or seven sessions to complete this. Hope uh, this, all this session made you to understand in a better way the various masonry units, the various materials and the various issues involved in the production of building material and, okay, the various recycling technologies. Did you get my point? So like this, we can go ahead with the things. Hope you understood everything. Okay. If you have any doubts, you can get back to me. Thank you very much for listening to my videos. Thank you.